This is The Bakery from Pantasy. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a detailed hands-on review. Let's get started. Pantasy has kindly provided this set for my review, and I will give you my honest thoughts and opinions on it. Later on in the video, I'll compare it to another building that's in their modular building collection, which is Baker Street 221B. This is a three-story modular building fully enclosed with a detailed interior space, though I'm not exactly sure of the piece count. I'm guessing mid to upper 2000s. My box um, had some water damage due to a recent hurricane. Hopefully uh, that's just an isolated event. And the back of the box shows some different views of the finished build, as well as some interior details. The contents of box number one include numbered bags for seven building stages, as well as a couple unnumbered bags for transparent window and door elements. We've got a 16 by 16 plate, as well as a 32 by 32 plate, and an instruction manual. Bags one through six will be used for the ground level, seven through 10 for the second, 11 through 13 for the third, and to finish it off, 14 and 15 will complete the roof. The elements used in Pantasy products are compatible with Lego. The clutch power is good, though the tiling is scuffed up more than I'm used to. And take a look at this deformed plant piece. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Something to note, there are no stickers in the set. And in bag three, I'm starting to see some printed tiles. The ground level is now complete, and I have to admit, things are looking really good from every angle. On the interior, we've got a fully decorated bakery slash coffee shop, and I like the builds going on with the furniture, the signage. I, I like these chairs, the way that they're built, and this little table arrangement by the window. We also have a little uh, coffee corner well, you can order coffee from the outside. I'll give you a full um, tour of the interior a little bit later. Prior to entering the bakery, you're greeted by this nice water fountain and these decorative barriers separating the sidewalk from the street. I, I like the color scheme that's going on with this building. It gives me a coffee shop feel with the dark brown and dark green. We've got a fence element here. I like that. The light fixtures uh, flanking the doors. A fire hydrant off to the left. Over here we've got a street light. And this is where you can order your coffee from out on the street. You don't even have to step into the shop. I think that's nice. And I really like this signage that's built up for the mug and the coffee pouring into it. That's really cool. What's also cool is you can open up this wall here and you can see the coffee machine inside with the cups or lids. And over here we've got the window peering in to the table. There are flowers decorating all four sides of the exterior, giving it a nice color contrast to the otherwise dark walls of the first floor. Also, Giving it, a, giving it a color contrast is the awning up above the window. Uh, we've got a little table with a coffee cup on it. We've got swinging doors that are transparent leading into the kitchen. It's a little bit odd that there's not just a standard traditional door, being that this is coming from the exterior. Windows on the sides and then back here. On the back of the building, we've got a lot of detail. We've got a AC unit, um, dripping condensation from it. We've got a downpipe with some dynamic water features with uh, water coming out of the pipe there. Some nice uh, greenery climbing up the wall. Uh, emergency escape ladder. A door leading to the gym that I believe will be on the second floor. Street post here. Let's not forget about the cat. Over on this side, we have a bunch of windows with flower beds below them. 
Up above, I like the decorative details done with the fender pieces here. And then as we round the corner past the fire hydrant, we're back to the front. And now to start working on the second floor, which contains the gym. I'm now moving on to box two, which has building stages eight through 15. Oh, the gym is so cool. The second floor is now complete, as well as the balcony on the third floor. I'll give you a full tour of the interior later, but for now, let's get this placed up on top of the ground floor and take a look at the exterior so far. As with the first floor, the second floor is looking good from all different angles. Here's a look at the front facade, and there's different color contrast from the ground level, and a lot of different geometries and textures. It just looks interesting, appealing to the eye. I like how the bakery sign is done up with the tiling. I believe this is a donut as part of the sign. Going around to this side, we start to see a lot of nougat colors. I like the shaping of the windows exposed. And a lot of windows throughout the build on all four sides, which I appreciate. So you can see some of the interior details without opening it up. Same from the back. Look at how much detail is on the back of the building. We've got the another window showing the punching bag into the gym. Um, here's a continuation of the downspout, some more vegetation growing on the wall, uh, the escape ladder going all the way up. It'll go all the way up to the third floor. Little fire escape balcony here on the second. More windows on this side, some awnings covering those windows, and then back around to the front. And now moving on to floor number three. This floor appears to be an apartment. As with the second floor, light gray is used for the floors and nougat is used for the walls for the most part. However, there are some different window designs with this floor. Take a look at that once I get it in place. Oop. There we go. All right, so looking at it from the front, this door leads from the apartment out onto this balcony. We've got a chihuahua out front. The balcony is tiled up with tan and nougat colors. Over here, we've got a flower pot with one flower petal that fell to the ground. Over here, there's a table with some food and perhaps that's a wine bottle. Uh, nice looking, interesting window right here. That's the bathroom inside. Take a look at that a little bit later. And more brown windows that follow the pattern of the previous two floors on that side. And continuation of the greenery, the downspout, and the fire escape leading up to the third floor. We've got an AC unit right here, which is also present on the interior. So that makes sense. And here's a, a third one of these windows that's framed up with these white elements. And now it's time to cap things off with the roof. And here's the roof. There's quite a bit going on with it. It's more sizable than it really needed to be, but I appreciate that. I appreciate the scale. I like all of the, the dark red and the tan highlights going around these three windows. We've got a suggestion of gutters, I believe, going around. And then this separate piece of roof, um, there's no interior space access for that, but look at all of the access you have back here. Up here, even a second uh, level where you have antennas, and then this can be removed to see what's down below. There's some birds perched up here on these in this garden area. It's a very tranquil place. Over here, I'm not quite sure what that is. Maybe... Maybe it's some kind of water fountain, um, vegetation, and fences going around. Yeah, pretty well finished off. Now, speaking of finishing off, let's put this on top. 
the roof is attached, and the set is complete. Unfortunately, there are no figures that come along with the set. You're going to have to provide your own. There are studs that are exposed in uh, different parts of the build, so you can attach figures. But, yeah, they're not included. However, what you do get here is pretty massive. This whole thing sits on a 32 by 32 uh, plate, and it's all fully detailed. Tiled up all the way in the front and in the back. The building itself, well, aside, aside from the height, which is already pretty impressive, it comes back to near the edge of the plate, only leaving one or two studs left of uh, space. So yeah, impressive detailing and size with this. I feel like there should have been an extra stud or two to secure the roof here where it just bows up. Anyway, I'm gonna take you for a full interior tour, then I'll give you the pros and cons of this set, in my opinion, and then finally, I'll do some side-by-side -side comparisons with the Sherlock Holmes Baker Street 221B apartment. If you're coming to the bakery to get a tasty treat, you're gonna to wanna to go through these double doors in front. They're a little bit difficult to open without any doorknobs. And I realized there are no doorknobs on any of the doors in the set, which is weird because it would have been easy to add. Um, if you're just coming for some coffee, you can just stop by on the street, you don't have to enter those doors. And you can, having this hinged wall makes it easier to put a figure in there to have the play feature of somebody serving coffee for uh, somebody on the street. Don't try to go through the kitchen doors. Yep, off limits except for employees. Now, if you're just going to the gym or you live on the third story, you could just go through this back door here. Again, with the doorknob, it's a little bit tough to open, but you go up those stairs here, enter the gym, and then there's another staircase leading up to the apartment on the third floor. Upon entering the bakery through the double doors, you'll be greeted by some fresh baguettes and croissants. Off to your left are shelves full of goodies. Um, you'll have to use your imagination what each of these represent. We've got the cash register here. Uh, there are a couple studs for a figure to stand there. And up above where the cashier would be are menus. Uh, it's duplicated twice there. It's the same stuff on both menus. There's a flip up door here for employees to go in and out of there and the kitchen. Here's a little seating area for guests. And there's that coffee corner where somebody will be serving coffee to people on the street. The kitchen is a little bit hard to access, but from this doorway you can see that there's a sink in there. There's a stove with a hood up above. And come to think of it, this is not an AC unit, but rather a vent for that hood. And there's some cabinets over here, some different ingredients. The floor's not tiled over in the kitchen, but I think that's okay. The staircase leads up to the gym. And up here, you've got some nice builds for the equipment. You've got a treadmill with a print on it, an exercise bike. I really like how that's done. Uh, some dumbbells and a bench press. And it looks like some extra weights scattered on the floor. Now, I'm not quite sure what this is right here, but maybe that's some kind of screening process. It gives you an, an analysis of your condition, how fit you are. And over here in the corner, we've got a water cooler and a punching bag. I think it's pretty cool how the gym overlooks the bakery down below. You can't remove this balcony right here, which is kind of weird, but I guess that's okay. Now, going up these stairs will lead you to the apartment. However, it seems like there's a stair missing. You have to make a jump on that uh, final step. Final step is a doozy. The apartment is air-conditioned. 
There's the air conditioner extending to the outside. Got this light fixture, a uh, fashion poster on the wall, a comfy chair, plant, cabinet full of stuff, a newspaper, magazine, book stand over here, the door leading out to the balcony, a red rug over here in this corner, got a nicely built bed with nightstands on each side, uh, some kind of painting on the wall. Uh, this working desk right here with papers piled up, um, coffee or teacup here. I'm not quite sure what that is. And then over in this corner, we've got a plant and the bathroom, which you can see through this transparent door. I'm not quite sure why they used a transparent door. We only have a couple of the necessities in this bathroom. We're missing a shower. And that would have really been nice to have after a day of working out at the gym. Now there appears to be a hatch leading up to the rooftop. However, to access it, well, there's no ladder or staircase. You would have to precariously climb on top of the AC unit to get up here. <laughs> if you do manage to get up here, it's a pretty tranquil place. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of this set. Starting with the pros, I like the color combinations used throughout, all the way from the dark red rooftop to the nougat midsection and the dark first level with the dark brown and dark greens and then splashes of color throughout. And even the sidewalk, the light gray with the dark gray curb, there's a lot of interest to be seen, a lot of interesting things and as well as the geometries of the building as well with different steps in it, not just one flat surface. There's a lot of detail and realism. And I like all the, the windows. There's a lot of windows which help you see some of the details inside without lifting off each floor. I really like that. Also, what I really like is the fact that Everything decorated in this set is done with a print. There are no stickers. And just in general, th this building looks good from all angles. Now let's talk about the cons. Though I'm sure this building will look good next to other modular buildings, there's no easy way to connect it to the other ones, as there's no pins. So you've got your work cut out to do a little bit of modifications to adapt it into a city. Uh, the doors, I don't know why there's there's not consistency between these three doors. Seems like this door should have been used again up here. And then this door right here doesn't quite look right. Perhaps the transparent door for the bathroom should have been right here. And this one should have been used as a privacy door for the bathroom. And then the fact that there are no doorknobs. Um, so I got a lot of problems with doors, including this one leading to the kitchen. Just somebody from the street can just walk right into the kitchen. There we go. I got the door switched up. I think that looks a lot better and makes a lot more sense. Now to round out the cons, the major one being, oh, just knocked off the downpipe, that there are no figures, which really take away from the playability. So you're going to have to provide your own figures to, to have any kind of playability in this set. Um, and, oh yeah, that deformed piece uh, for the plant, that was kind of odd. I think the pros outweigh the cons, especially with the price point. Uh, it retails for $150 on Pantasy.com, but they've got a special going on right now. It's at $120, but you can even get it cheaper than that on Amazon, and I'll put a link in the description of this video. Now I'm going to show you some side-by-side -side comparisons with the Sherlock Holmes Apartment 221B set, and though it's a little bit more narrow this way, uh, it's the same depth, and the building is just as massive, uh, three stories tall, the chimney actually extends a little bit taller than the bakery building. Now, let's get these 
uh, swapped and see how they look. I think this setup looks good as well. The way that these sets are designed, you're going to need to leave an alleyway or a roadway in between the buildings to make sense. The bakery by far has way more displayability from all angles. I think both of these buildings look really good. It's hard for me to pick a favorite. Um, there's enough continuity between the two of them that I think they can go well on the same street. But then yet again, there's enough uniqueness between the two, between the different colors and architectural details that help them stand out from one another. Now, the major downfall of this one is not having the figures, whereas the Sherlock Holmes set, you had five, and they're really good figures, and you've got the horse and carriage as well. So perhaps this one is the better buy. With all of that being said, I think Fantasy did a great job with this bakery. Love the gym on the second floor and all of the details throughout, exterior and interior. Well, that does it for this video. Thanks for watching.